أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد First of all, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we seek His help and aid, and we ask Allah to forgive us, we ask Allah to protect us, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and all those who follow him until the day of judgment. Ameen. Inshallah, for our Ramadan series, uh, we would like to bring to you uh, some of the ahkam, ahkam of fasting, ahkam of siyam, some of the ruling uh, of fasting the month of Ramadan. So first of all, we would like to look at the definition of fasting. So the word siyam or saum, which is an Arabic word, came from the root sama yasumu. Sama yasumu literally means to abstain from. To abstain from something to stay away or to abstain from something according to the Sharia the Islamic law fasting is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention to please him by abstaining from eating and drinking and sexual intercourse or lustful discharge of semen from the break of dawn until sunset so although the definition indicates restraining the stomach and private parts, also the tongue, the eyes, and other limbs are equally obligated to be restrained by the one who is fasting to gain the full rewards for the fast. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said that he who does not desist from obscene language and acting obscenely uh, during the period of fasting, Allah has no need for him leaving off food and drink. And in another hadith, the Prophet Wasallam said that fasting is not only to restrain yourself from food and drink. Fasting is not to stay away only from food and drink. Fasting is to restrain yourself from obscene acts. That if someone verbally abuses you or acts ignorantly towards you, that you should say to them, I am fasting. So now we will look at the legal status of fasting in the month of Ramadan. So we know that fasting is obligatory, it's mandatory, it's compulsory. According to the Quran, according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and according to ijma, consensus of scholars. From the Quran, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. That, O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, in order that you may learn self-restraint. So the proof in this verse is very obvious. Allah says, Kutiba alaykum. Kutiba alaykum means it's prescribed for you or written for you. It indicates that the action that follows it becomes mandatory upon the believers, men and women. Also proof from the Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Bunya al-Islam wa ala khams shahadati an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah wa iqam al-salah wa ita al-zakah wa hajj al-bayt wa sawm ramadan That Islam is built on five pillars testifying that there is no one deserved to be worshipped except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, establishing the prayer, giving the zakah, 
observing the fast in the month of Ramadan and the pilgrimage to the house of Allah. So this, this hadith established fasting during the month of Ramadan as one of the pillars of Islam. And based on these Quranic uh, uh, proof and uh, sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the consensus of scholars agreed ijma' that fasting the month of Ramadan is mandatory, is obligatory, is compulsory on the Muslims. Now, when was Ramadan made compulsory? <clears throat> now, fasting in the month of Ramadan is the third pillar of Islam and became obligatory, compulsory in the second year of the Hijrah, the second year of the migration of the Prophet wasallam from Mecca to Medina. So the Prophet wasallam he fasted nine years of his life. He fasted for nine years, the month of Ramadan. Now, how do we know when the month of Ramadan starts in order to start fasting? Well, fasting is not obligatory until it is certain the beginning of the month of Ramadan has been established and has been reached. And there is no fasting before the month uh, of Ramadan begins. Uh, if someone wants to fast a day or two uh, before the month of Ramadan, just to make sure that they catch the month of Ramadan, uh, those days are called ayyam shak the, the uh, doubtful days. And it's not, it's not um, recommended that one should fast on those days unless one is habitually fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and it coincides with those days. So the beginning of Ramadan is determined by two ways. One, the first way is by seeing the new moon, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that whoever of you lives to see this month should fast. From an shahida minkum fal yasum. And the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you see the moon, then fast. And in another narration, the Prophet wasallam said that when you see the new moon, fast. And when you see the new moon, stop your fast. So the, the beginning of Ramadan is based on the sighting of the, of the moon. Uh, 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 someone has to see the moon. So it is not a condition that everyone has to personally uh, see the new moon. If someone trustworthy witnessed it, then it is obligatory on everyone to fast based on that. So the witness must be mature, must be sane, must be Muslim, must be trustworthy, and also must have a good vision. So it is uh, possible for Ramadan to start on the sighting of the moon based on one individual, as stated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that the people uh, looked out for the new moon, so I informed the Prophet wasallam that I had seen it. And he fasted, and he ordered the people to fast. Now, the second way uh, to start the month of Ramadan, to start the month of fasting, is by uh, finishing the month before it. So the lunar month, uh, lunar months have 29 or 30 days, not 31, 29 or 30 days. So when the previous month reaches 30 days, then the legal ruling is to start the next month, even if you don't see the moon. So if it's a cloudy day and no one, uh, 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 no one witnessed the moon, uh, then you would count 30 days of the previous month. So when the previous month reaches 30 days, then the legal ruling is to start the next month even if you don't see the moon. As the Prophet wasallam said, fast when you see the moon and break your fast when you see the moon. And when you cannot see it, then count 30 days. Hadith reported in Sahih Muslim. So with this, with these hadith, it's very clear that Ramadan does not start without the sighting of the new moon. 
So if you don't see it, then count 30 days for Shaban. Next, we will look at the intention for the fast. What is the ruling on the intention, the niya for the fast? Now, for the obligatory fast, like the fast in Ramadan, it is obligatory. It is a compulsory to intend to fast the night before the fast itself. So the niya should be uh, in the heart. The niya should be in the heart. It's not verbally. And the niya should be in uh, the night before, uh, before the, the actual of, uh, day of the fast, uh, before Fajr, before Salat al-Fajr. So you must have the intention to fast the night before until Salat al-Fajr. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that he who does not intend to fast before it is Fajr, there is no fast for him. Hadith reported in Abu Dawood. So this is only for obligatory fast, compulsory fast. As for voluntary fast, uh, like uh, Mondays and Thursdays, uh, we should all, all also know uh, uh, for voluntary fast, the intention uh, you could you could have the intention during the day because there's a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went to Aisha and asked her that uh, do you have something to eat if not then I'm fasting so uh, based on that uh, it is the intention um, it's okay for voluntary fast that you you it's not a, a must that you have you must have the the niya from the night before so. One thing to note that the intention is in the heart. There is no verbal intention. N there is n nothing to be said verbally that I intend to fast tomorrow, or I intend to fast today uh, verbally. The, the niya is in the heart. So next we will look at the timing for the fast. What is the time for beginning the fast and what is the time for ending the fast? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the timing for, fa for the fast from the true dawn, from the break of dawn to sunset. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْأَبْيَدُ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْأَسْوَدِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And eat and drink until the white tread, that is the light of the dawn, appears to you distinct from the black tread that is the darkness of the night then complete your fast until nightfall that complete your fast until nightfall so the fixed timing for the fast till the day of judgment is from the true dawn until sunset now we will look at the categories of people who are obligated to fast. So who must fast? Not everybody. Uh, some people are exempted from fasting. So who must fast? Muslim, force must be a Muslim. A kafir, fasting is not obligatory upon kafir. Uh, fasting will not even be accepted from the kafir. So it must be a Muslim, must be mature, balig, must be sane, and able to fast and must be free from any prevention from fasting and we will look at some of those and then fasting uh, in its correct time in ramadan is obligatory on these people muslim mature sane able to fast and free from any prevention from fasting so we will look at uh, uh, now uh, who are exempted uh, what are the categories of people who are exempted from fasting uh, in the month of Ramadan? What are some of the, the categories of people who are exempted from fasting? Number one, a child. So it is not compulsory on a child to fast until they reach maturity, balig, until they are mature. The, the, based on the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the pen has been lifted from three people. One, 
one who is sleeping until he wakes up to the child until they became mature and also the insane until he becomes sane so three people are exempted in this hadith one one who is sleeping until he wakes up uh, one a child until he or she matures and uh, also an insane until he becomes sane hadith reported in abu Dawood. but the parents or the guardian for the child must encourage them to fast the, the, the parents must encourage them to fast at a young age in this way when they become mature it it will be easy for them to fast they already introduced to fasting so number two the insane an insane person someone who is mentally challenged fasting is not compulsory on them because of the hadith that we mentioned that three uh, the pen has been lifted from three people so one of the the category is uh, one who is insane uh, uh, until he becomes sane so the next category is the senile uh, who has become delirious and lost the ability to make proper judgments then he is not obligated to fast but if sometimes he's okay, and sometimes uh, and, and, and he's senile, sometimes he remembers uh, 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 things and sometimes he don't, then when at times when he's okay, then it is obligatory for him to fast at those times. Similarly with Salah. So at times when he's okay, he, he could pray. And when he forgets, then it's not compulsory on him. <clears throat> Number three, the weak person who is incapable of fasting and his condition will never improve like an old person or a, ter a terminally ill person, someone who uh, maybe has cancer, uh, maybe um, diabetes, terminally ill, that um, their condition will not improve, then he does not have to fast. He does not have to fast as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fear Allah as much as you're able to Fear Allah as much as your ability uh, So and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not burden someone more than he can bear So the, the, this category is uh, is very clear that someone who is weak and incapable of fasting and his condition will not improve, will never improve because of chronic illness, then he is exempted. The next category is one who is exempted from fasting is the traveler. So one who is traveling for a reason, then they have a choice between fasting and not to fast for the duration of the travel however if one is only traveling with the intention of not fasting so one plan his traveling schedule during ramadan so that he could escape from fasting well then it is obligatory for them to fast and haram for them to break the fast so it's based on the intention here that if one is traveling only for the uh, to travel in Ramadan to be excused from fasting, then Allah knows their intention and they must fast and they are not allowed to break the fast. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ That whoever is sick or traveling then they may fast on different days and allah wants ease for you allah wants to make things easy for you and not difficult so the traveler is exempt and uh and if uh, the intention of travel is only to escape from ramadan that's not allowed number six the person who is sick and this is divided into three categories. So one, 
the sick person whom they fast does not cause hardship on them, nor does it harm them. So a person who is sick, but the fasting would not affect their sickness and would not cause any hardship and would not harm them, then it is obligatory for them to fast because they do not have an excuse. Uh, fasting will have no effect on them, would not harm their, would not uh, uh, decrease uh, or deteriorate their sickness. Uh, the second is the sick person whom the fast becomes a difficulty on them, but it doesn't harm them. So it's still difficult on them, but it doesn't harm them. So this person should eat according to the ayah, so should not fast. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That whoever among you is sick or traveling should fast a, a, a number of other days. So it is disliked for this person to fast because he is not taking the clearance. He is not taking the excuse and the ruqsa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are hurting themselves. The next is the sick person whom fasting will harm them completely so it is obligatory for them to eat not to fast so this person is exempt from fasting completely because fasting will cause harm more harm to their body uh, as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wala bi ila that indeed uh, uh, your body has uh, do not cause destruction with your own hands. Do not destroy your own yourself with your own hands. And then we know also uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that indeed your body has a right over you also. So here, uh, the other category of those exempted are the menstruating women and also uh, women um, having postnatal bleeding. Um, Postnatal bleeding is a ch after child birth. So uh, they are excused from fasting. They are not allowed to fast. And it is obligatory for them to make up the fast at different days, different time, when it is convenient for them. The next category of those exempted are pregnant and nursing women who fear for themselves and also fear for their suckling uh, for their babies. So this category is the, the, the pregnant, uh, who is pregnant and, uh, and who is suckling the baby, who is nursing the baby. So they're exempt from fasting. However, they have to make up their fast at different days. So they should not fast and they should make up the fast at different days. And the final category of those exempted from fasting is a person who must rescue someone else's life, who must rescue someone else. For example, uh, rescue them from fire, rescue uh, someone else from drowning, and in order for them to, 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 to be, um, they have to eat. So that if they have to eat in order to save the person's life, then it is obligatory for, uh, for them to eat. Uh, it is uh, uh, fasting is exempted from them, um, but they have to make up the fast at a later time. They have to make up the fast at a later time. An example of this is those who fighting in the cause of Allah. So if a person is fighting in the cause of Allah, in the way of Allah, this person may eat and make up the fast later because uh, he is protecting the Muslims. So now we will look at uh, we will look at uh, some of the things that break the fast. Uh, quickly, we, we will run through some of the things that break the fast. Number one, eating and drinking deliberately. So this is not out of forgetfulness. It is not out of unconsciously uh, eating. It is uh, or accidentally or by force, someone forcing you to eat. No, this is eating and drinking deliberately, intentionally. This breaks the fast. Because if you eat or drink forgetfully or accidentally, the Prophet Wasallam said, if one of you eats and drinks out of forgetfulness while fasting, then let him complete his fast. For it was Allah indeed who gave him food and drink. Hadith reported in Sahih Bukhari. The second uh, that breaks the fast, sexual relations with one's spouse 
during the daytime of Ramadan. And this is from the biggest and the greatest sin. Uh, the, uh, the person uh, fast is invalidated regardless if it is obligatory fast or voluntary fast. One who commits sexual intercourse during the daytime of fasting regardless of compulsory Ramadan fast or voluntary fast, the fast is broken. So if this is done for Ramadan, for fasting in Ramadan, then you have to make kafara expiation for this sin, for this uh, for a sin. And the, uh, the force is for them to free a slave. Now, if that is difficult and they cannot free a slave, then they must fast for two consecutive months. Two consecutive months. It must be consecutive. And if they cannot fast for two consecutive months, then must be, must um, feed 60 poor people. Must feed 60 poor people. Uh, so if they cannot do that, if unable to even do that, then the obligation of expiation is removed because they're unable to, they, they cannot. The next is what breaks the fast the release of sperm from kissing, touching, embracing, uh, cuddling. So if a uh, sperm is released, then it's a uh, it fast is broken. So this is from the desire that the fasting person should avoid. As we know, the Hadith could see that uh, uh, he leaves his food and drink and desires for my sake. That is Allah's sake. So Hadith reported in Sahih Bukhari. So as for kissing and touching without ejaculation, then it does not invalidate the fast. As the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to kiss and embrace his wives while fasting, for he had the most control of all of you over his desires. So this hadith is agreed upon, uh, re reported in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. However, um, uh, for, so young people should avoid, uh, young couples should avoid uh, hugging, kissing, and uh, cuddling because this might lead to uh, uh, the, the desires might, they might not be able to control. But older, older folks uh, allowed, uh, to, based on your, your, your ability to control your desires. Uh, the next is inducing vomiting. What breaks the fast? Induce vomiting. So if someone intentionally, uh, you know, tried to induce vomit to throw up, it breaks the fast. But if it is, if uh, someone throws up a little bit um, accidentally, like brushing the, while brushing their teeth or something, uh, then it does not break the fast. Next, menstruation and postnatal bleeding. Uh, during the daytime of fasting, during the daytime of Ramadan, well, while one is fasting, the fast is broken. And they have to make up the fast later. The next is, from among the things that break the fast are injections containing nourishment. So injections containing nourishment, someone take an injection um, with, with glucose or saline, um uh these these reaches regardless if it reaches the stomach or the bloodstream these reaches the bloodstream uh the fast is broken however for like covid vaccine and and vaccine these are not nourishment not food related this does not break the fast so uh, a vaccine would not break the fast so with this we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, to help us to reach Ramadan and, and, and help us to, to be better Muslims. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and help us to, um, to observe the fast as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had fasted. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to see Ramadan and grant us life to see Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته